This is James from Full Force Racing Components on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. James is a suspension guru with more than a decade's experience in designing, manufacturing and tuning custom suspension components for V8 racing cars, rally cars and all facets of motorbike suspension whether it's been motocross, enduro, speedway, flat track and of course adventure bikes. He'll be working on the DR650 in various stages. This vid looks at his first steps in making that suspension work properly. As we mentioned in the very first vid of the series, the DR is a brilliant budget bike to transform into the sort of beast you want once you work on a few major design issues. The big one being suspension. If you are a featherweight and riding nothing harder than smooth dirt roads, you will find the stock suspension is okay. But the problem of course is the moment you are in trouble, it won't be doing you any favours. The front end dives badly under panic braking and if you run off the road it will bounce you like a trampoline in the rough stuff. The major problems, the springs are way too soft, the forks are the ancient rod design. Just pause to read more. They've got no damping adjustment and virtually no damping either. Then if you use heavier oil to get the damping right, you can't get good performance on both fast and slow fork movements, unlike a modern cartridge fork. The rear spring does have adjustment for the compression damping, but no rebound. It barely makes any difference anyway. The entire shock is under damped and the ratio of compression to rebound damping is way out of sync as well. The good news, you can transform that shitty stock suspension into very sexy suspenders for less than $1,000. And the DR650 is so cheap, you'll still be well ahead in the long run. There are budget do-it-yourself mods. If you are on a very tight budget, have a look at these. But from experience, I would highly recommend bypassing these and get it done properly. So what did we do for our first suspension upgrade? For the forks, we just did a budget upgrade first to see how much this improved things. We ditched the horribly designed dual rate fork springs and would urge anyone to do so. We put in stiffer springs to match my weight and the 19 litre IMS tank we have on order. I've been messing around with spring rates and we've got 15 weight fork oil and I can see the limitations of these forks. She's handling jumps really well now, but on the small stuff, she's harsh. And that's always the drawback with rod forks. We backed off the 10 weight fork oil in a different brand that was an acceptable compromise. This is so much better now. You can feel over these little corrugations. It's so much more stable and you can just trust the bike more. And of course, this is the issue with the old rod design forks. You simply can't get them working well on short, sharp hits and also on big, relatively slower fork movements. A lot of riders solve this through using intimidators or emulators in the forks. But James will be exploring some other possible solutions in our next suspension upgrade. It's so much better under brakes now. You can see here, there's very little diving when you, when you hit the brakes. So our conclusions on the forks. This budget fork mod dramatically changes the fork's performance, but still falls short of a modern fork in terms of safety and comfort off-road. We regard new springs and appropriate fork oil as an absolute bare minimum, but would strongly recommend going further. 
On the rear, James felt the rear shocks damping was so poorly designed he didn't bother with the budget upgrade of trying 10 weight shock oil replacing the stock 5 weight. The dyno indicated the compression and rebound damping are simply too poorly matched to get reasonable performance, so he custom made a new valve. Results? Brilliant. The rear end now behaves itself on fast choppy surfaces but also soaks up those big hits from jumps and the like. James reckons there's quite a bit more that can be done to improve the rear shock still, but we'll have to wait until the next upgrade to see what he comes up with. Cornering's just way more predictable even with these dodgy stock tyres still. Bills is just gripping so much better. It's not wallowing all over the place. Once we get the front forks behaving in a similar way, this DR is going to be even more fun to ride. Can't wait to see that next upgrade.